Hello, welcome to Brimwood Farm and my favourite place, the actual Brimwood Farm. So we're up here today for a uh, work day, so I'm going to vlog all about it. So we're going to be doing some pond work, some bluebells, some strimming and just enjoying a sunny Sunday. So I think the first thing we'll do is we'll go and check out the bluebell wood. Now if you remember two years ago we planted that bluebell wood and sadly they sent us the wrong bulbs and so we didn't put in English British bluebells, we put in a hybridised form which was really really disappointing and I was gutted. Uh, last year we put in some more but I missed the flowering date so let's go and check out the third year of flowering and see what's happened. I just want to stop and listen to the sounds of the rooks. So there is the road, but up here we have a rookery. So they can be a bit of a pest. They are loud, but I quite like having them. They're a nostalgic sound for me. You can see also how close we are to the road. So we'll need fencing or putting along there eventually. Right, let's walk this way. Come on, Beetle, come on. So the bluebell wood, or the, the start of the bluebell grove, is actually up near that white bucket. That's actually a, an old pheasant feeder. Let's go under this little canopy. And I can see a few hints of blue. Now this is a new wood, remember, the brand new bluebell wood. So we've only put in a hundred bulbs, so you're not going to get that massive colour like you would expect with established ones. You're just going to get the odd snatch of a bulb here and there. And actually, we can see them. So this is stunning, and I can see even from just here that these are British English bluebells. This is a fantastic variety, or an example rather, down here. So this bluebell here, you can see it's on the curve, so a hybridised version or the Spanish version would be upright and the, the flowers also face up. Whereas this British one has the natural curve. It also has scented bluebells, so the, the flowers are scented. And there's quite a few come up. So this is really great. Beetle's very hot. Let's go up to this mound up here. Come on Beetle, come on, let's go. Oh, this is really, I'm really, really pleased. So bluebells seed really, really well. So these basically will seed themselves over time. We'll put in more every single year. <laughs> She's so funny. We'll put in more every year just to help spread. Um, but we've got some lovely ones. Oh, this is a strange one. Now this one is not supposed to be this colour. Uh, so we, I don't know what to do about that. Let's give it a sniff and see if it's British. See, it does have a scent. So I don't think it's a truly hybridised variety. I think it's just a bit of a mutation. I might leave that. You know, I'm all for natural mutations. But you can see up here from the, on the bank, all of this green is baby sycamores. They don't end up growing into anything. But you can see there are patches of blue and so this bluebell wood is starting to grow. So that's, thr I'm thrilled. I'm really happy about that. Now, as we're here quite early in the season, stuff hasn't started growing, bracken, let's take a walk through the rest of the pit and see what we can find. It's a lovely, Crab apple. Really in bloom, crazily in bloom. Beautiful. Mm. 
So this is a little nice mounted point. Now we normally camp up at the top of that ridge there. So that's where the fencing is going to go around. Our uh, waterfowl pond is over there. This was used, and still is a little bit, by some local farmers to raise pheasants, hence the bit of stock fencing. And then this is all pit. This is a big old tree stump. And then the rest of the pit continues through here. Now I'm not going to walk through here because I've got Beetle with me. And although I've got Wellington boots on, I'm sure that poor old Beetle does not want to go through this uh, swathe of nettles. But you can see the job in hand. So this we do want to turn into a kind of a tropical garden with palms, flax, things like that. There's a normal, there's a sort of a walkway through already. So we want to have a, a sort of a, a managed wilderness with trees, um, some, you know, some ornamental plants. We'd quite like, I mean, this is a big, big dream, but out that side is the edge of the actual pit and the quarry. And we would like to create a waterfall that comes off the quarry and then comes through this whole way through a rill in the ground all the way through to our waterfowl pond. Now that's going to be an expensive thing, a challenging thing and a very, very long term goal. But that kind of is the big dream to have all of this as kind of a little a lost tropical gardens uh, with beautiful planting. Uh, you know, gunnerers uh, around the waterfall, or water plants, hostas, things like that. And keep a lot of these native trees, of course. And we do have deer in here, and foxes, and rabbits, as you can see from these holes. So not, we don't want to force any wildlife out. We just want to add to the wildlife. There's another crab apple there. So, so far, the bluebell wood has been very inspiring. And it's nice to get kind of a big over picture of this, although I've just sort of as I'm standing here realising what a lot of work it is. What a lot of work indeed. It's always this thing when you have these grand ideas and then you actually, I say this every single time I come here, I come here and I realise the scale. The scale is massive, but I'm not put off. and. Um, I've got lots of friends and family that want to come and help. I know that some of you guys have offered your services to come and help on camping weekends and things. Um, obviously I get money through Patreon um, and I get money through YouTube ads as well. So that all comes to creating hopefully this future dream. So uh, let's go and see what else we can find on the farm. You don't want to disturb nests of owls, and if there's a barn owl in there, it's actually illegal to go and disturb that nest box. But what I wanted to show you was down here. This is an owl pellet, and in fact, this is a barn owl pellet. And you can see this is the hair of a rabbit or shrews and things, and then inside it's got bones. Now, you wouldn't expect to find many of them around this time of year because barn owls actually lay their eggs on a nest of owl pellets. So around the time they're starting to nest, they will actually just put all their pellets into their nest boxes um, and they'll lay their eggs on them and then the chicks will be on them. So we can't tell whether there's one in there or not by the presence of this pellet. But the simple fact of this pellet being here means at some point an owl has sat up here eating its food and then 
regurgitated. So that is extremely good news. Um, so there's the Valpet, but before we cause any more disturbance, me and uh, Beetle are going to scarper. Have a deer. Now that is a roe deer. It's actually injured, which is why it hasn't run away immediately. Its left, back left leg, you can see it's hopping along. Um, pretty amazing though. It literally just sods down there. It literally just came straight up at me here. And it's obviously now making its way into the wood. I'm glad, I know it was very fuzzy. But I'm glad to have it in, uh, in the shop for you guys. So interestingly, we noticed something. So here's one of, we have three major ancient oaks on this site. So here's the first. Here's the second. Both in leaf, looking nice. Here's the third. I don't know what's happened. It is still alive. It has got tiny pieces of leaf on the end of it, but you can see that it's really not in leaf as opposed to that one. You can see the difference there. Maybe it's just really old. Um, so we don't exactly know what's gonna be happening to this tree. Hopefully it will uh, burst into leaf and it's just a little bit later. The nice thing was, although we didn't actually realise when we walked up to it, there was a kestrel in it. And the kestrel flew off that way and as it was flying away I realised it must have been roosting in this tree. So that's nice, at least it's a kestrel roost. But I'm not entirely sure what's happened to this tree to make it that way. This is the pond that we're working on and then this is the view obviously across the rest of the farm. And kind of in the corners, you can't see many buildings. That's literally the, the farmhouse that isn't ours. But mostly it's just beautiful Suffolk countryside. So it's been a couple of weeks since we put these first plants in and you can see the water's actually quite clear. The plants have survived. They're doing quite well. And what's quite exciting is there are actually signs of life in here. So if you look really carefully, you can see little water mites moving around. There's some water boatmen. There's a few little bugs. There's a pond skater somewhere. Oh, there was a... Where is it? You just keep it, you can tell. Oh yeah, right here. So this is really, really good. So life is actually returning to this pond. Just by getting a little bit of sun on it. And if you plant some, there's something moving down there. Something quite big down there. What is that? Oh, it popped away. And there's a water boatman here. No, it'd be tall. And of course, the dog comes to disturb it. But yes, yeah, so the signs of life are returning to this pond, which is really, really good. So hopefully next year we'll get some frog spawn and tadpoles in here as well. But obviously we're going to keep planting it up and we're going to keep cutting it back. But um, we're making progress. So that is it for another farm vlog. Now, I must admit, I wasn't actually doing a lot of work today. The sun is beautiful, and so I mostly just kind of wandered around the farm looking at livestock and wildlife um, and the projects that we're gonna be doing in the future. Um, we also wandered over to the woodland and we discovered who owns it. So the guy that owns it was there with his wife and their ranger was there as well. So we had a really nice chat with them about what they're doing over in their woodland with conservation, owl boxes and things like that. We've exchanged numbers um, and so now we can kind of hopefully help each other out and maybe get our help from each other when we're doing our conservation and bird counts and things like that. So that's really, really good to know that there's somebody like-minded on the periphery. Uh, so we can hopefully work together to make a larger sort of wildlife spot 
So I hope you've enjoyed catching up with us uh, on everything that's going on at the farm. Let me just spin around so you can see the beautiful weather. Uh, if you're on Facebook, please come across and join me on Brimwell's Farm Community Group. Uh, you can always like, subscribe and share this video if you like, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.